That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Martin Eden, uh, the latest film directed by Pietro Marcello, uh, which premiered at the 2019 Venice Film Festival, where lead actor Luca Marinelli won the Volpe Cup for Best Actor. It's being released uh, as of October 16, 2020, courtesy of Kino Lorber. This is a surprise video for me. I have no idea what this movie's about. Just so didn't what? make time to watch this this week. Um, Tell me about it. Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, it's based on a what, what's considered a semi-autobiographical novel by Jack London, uh, set in 1909 Oakland, and here it's uh, relocated to Naples. Um, Jack London, of course, conjures very uh, specific um, images in my mind because uh, he's most celebrated uh, in America for his wilderness adventure films like Call of the Wild and White Fang or The Sea Wolf, all of which are novels that are perennially remade. Like there was just another Call of the Wild with Harrison Ford. I think, was that last year already or was that earlier this year? Anyhow, uh, and then of course, um, one of my first non-animated theatrical experiences was Handsome Little Ethan Hawke in White Fang back in uh, 1991. Um, anyhow, and I remember I had this book this paperback Martin Eden as a kid because I liked Jack London and I never read it. Uh, but I remember thinking the man on the cover of the copy I had was very handsome. Um, I missed, did you say what the movie's about? No, we're still oh, getting okay. there. We'll still get, we have time because you didn't, anyhow. Uh, I need to buy new pots and pans today, so let's go. <laughs> it's okay, go ahead. Pietro Marcello, this is technically his first uh, pure narrative cinema. Uh, his two previous offerings are kind of documentary hybrids. Um, his debut was 2009's The Mouth of the Wolf, which won the Teddy, it's the Queer Award at the Berlin Film Festival. Uh, that's about a man, uh, a, a criminal whose trans lover is waiting for him as he serves his prison sentence. The person uh, who made this film did that? Yes. Oh. Uh, and that uh, is made, if you see Martin Eden and are interested in seeing that, there's an opportunity right now to stream it uh, via Acropolis Cinema and Kino Lorber. Uh, and then Lost and Beautiful in 2015, which also has some ties to some things going on in Martin Eden. Anyhow, it's about the titular named character. The time frame is not as specific as London's 1909 Oakland. It's set in Naples. I think you're able to piece together that it's, I, I thought, leading up to the advent of World War I uh, in that same time period. Anyway, it's about a young, uh, semi-ignorant sailor um, named Martin Eden uh, who saves a young man named Arturo from getting, his, getting beat down. Uh, he's an upper middle class person. He, to thank him, he brings him to his parents' house for dinner, uh, and Martin immediately falls in love with uh, Arturo's sister. Uh, Elena Orsini, played by Jessica Cressy, uh, and then uh, they flirt over Baudelaire, uh, and he says he wants to be a writer, and she says, well, first you need an education. And he's a very vibrant, very vivacious young man. He kind of woos the family with his charm, uh, and then that kind of sets up the thrust of the narrative. He goes off to, um, you know, get his education and become a writer, hopefully secure wealth, and then fall in love with uh, you know, marry this woman. And of course, things don't go uh, according to plan, uh, and eventually he comes to despise the very people and the very system that he wants to have a place in. Um, it's a very heady, uh, kind of loquacious film. There are a lot of very interesting ideas about economic and political systems that I, I think that are written in a way uh, that immediately get the point across uh, for some things that are, are kind of difficult say, in this instance, for me to explain, but uh, I really enjoyed it. And as I saw it at Toronto in 2019, it was part of the platform section there, uh, and I, I think I liked it better, not only as a rewatch, but also not having to sandwich it in between five other films in a day. Okay. You have Liza Minnelli written down? Um, no. No? no. Oh. Uh, oh the, I'm trying to find something interesting. So Jack, Jack London, uh, the, Many look to this novel because the, he it ends by uh, him walking into the sea uh, and supposedly a, a rumination on London's own uh, suicide. Uh, it's debated, um, but this this novel, this narrative is actually, uh, despite the kind of maudlin tone it ends up taking, uh, is a success story, uh, which, um, in my mind, 
I, you can relate it to Theodore Dreiser's sister Carrie, which is about a uh, uh, woman of the streets, basically, who finds fame on the stage. Um, and even though she's not technically happy, there's that. Um, there are two scenes that I really liked in this. There's, uh, and they're both kind of with Luca Marinelli really going into impassioned overdrive. Uh, and that's one where he addresses a, a bunch of union workers that are organizing. Um, and he's trying to tell them that you can't, uh, you can't basically repeat the same system because then you're going to have a clandestine uh, repeat uh, of people doing even worse things to the underdogs. So you have to take into consideration individualism, not just the collective. And this is all about uh, uh, eschewing that. Uh, and London himself wanted Martin Eden to be a film about the critiques of individualism. <clears throat> but the layering of what happens to Martin Eden is the critique of that, uh, at least, and I haven't read the novel, at least as far as Marcello does it, uh, which I really appreciated. And uh, the, the other scene where he is sparring with some of the parents, some of um, Elena's parents' friends at the dinner table about socialism, uh, I, I think are also uh, worth, fun to unpack, but I feel like I'm rambling. Did you give any spoilers? Well, he dies. Oh. <laughs> that, that's a spoiler. And he comes to uh, hate himself, even though he becomes a major author. And, um, oh, and Elena, of course, who says, I'm, because of that speech he gives to the union uh, workers, he's splashed all over uh, newspapers as a socialist, even though he isn't a socialist. And so that subsection of society kind of distances themselves from him, including her family. Uh, but later, after he finds success, she comes back to him. Uh, if I have any real critiques of the film, it's that he, all of the other characters kind of operate on a, a level of cliché because he has another affair with a woman named Margarita who's of his class uh, and played by this beautiful woman who really has nothing to do. Uh, so there's nothing really fleshed out. He also has a sister who's abused by her, uh, uh, his brother-in-law. Uh, none of them are given any kind of real complexities because we focus so much time on this eponymous character. Um, so really quickly, this is about a man who meets a woman <clears throat> and like gets involved with her and her family. And wants to become a writer. But he ends up like hating her. Mm -hmm. And the world she represents. Well, it's... And then he leaves and then kills himself? Yeah. Okay. That sounds a little dry. No? Did you like it? I what did like it. What would you give it? I, I give it three and a half out of five. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The... I didn't get that, but okay. <laughs> Good. That's nice. Well, I mean, it's not the most exciting material to talk about, but as a no, as a cinematic not. experience, as two cinematographers, it was shot in super sixteen millimeter. It looks uh, exquisite. There's a, a lot of layered, uh, gritty shots of uh, the actors and close ups, and then some beautiful landscape sequences. Um, no, I I did really like it. Great. I think you would if you mm -hmm. had given it a chance. Oh well, we'll see. Anything else? No, that's it. Bye. Bye.